Hey guys, in this anime studio tutorial, I show you how to create and animate a skeleton using the bone layer. In a previous anime studio lesson, I showed you how to create a simple bone with an arm, and I showed you how to bend the arm and move the arm with the bone. Well, this tutorial takes that concept a step further in that we are going to design an entire skeletal structure for a character. Before we bone the character, and yes, I just use the term bone the character, so please flood the comment section with sexual comments, we need to have a character designed in Anime Studio, which you can see I have right now. I'm also going to assume that your character is comprised of different layers. I have broken my character into many layers, such as I have a hand layer for the hand, I have an, a lower arm portion for that part of the arm, an upper arm portion, and so on. Each arm and leg are comprised of about three different layers, top, bottom, foot, hand, so on. So once you have all of that drawn out and designed, what we're gonna do is create a bone layer if you haven't done so already. So go up here to your Layers dialog box and choose New Layer, Bone. Now you can name the bone whatever your character is going to be. So in this case, I'll double click on that layer and type in the name of my character, which is Benek, and click OK. Now, we need to take all of those elements that you have drawn and put them into the layer. So to do this, we will click on the top layer here of our drawing, scroll all the way down, hold and shift, click the bottom layer to highlight all of those layers, and then let's come back up here now to where our bone layer is. And we'll just simply click and drag until the bone layer is highlighted in red and release. You'll notice now that everything is indented, meaning that it is under the bone layer. And if we click this bone layer's arrow, you'll see we can hide and show the elements if we so choose. And just to note, you can create your bone layer first and then draw everything else inside of it as opposed to dragging all of your elements into it that can save you time. I was just showing this method in the event that you haven't done so already by putting all the layers into the bone layer. Now the next step is to draw the bones themselves. We're gonna do this by remaining on the bone layer. Also, just to point out, make sure you're on frame zero or else this method will not work. So come up here to your bone area and choose the add bone icon. Now we're gonna come over here to our character. Now depending on how you have drawn him, your bone placement will vary, but you should be able to follow a slightly similar structure to get going on your own creations. The first thing I need to do is draw a small bone near where his pelvic region is. This will allow us to pivot the torso later on. So take your cursor and from the top of the region, Click and drag downward and release. Your bone, if we zoom in, which we can do so if we have a mouse wheel or we can use the zoom in tool on Anime Studio. When we zoom in, you'll see now that we have a bone that's fat on the top and skinny on the bottom. And that's important to note because if you have it the other way around, it won't work the way we intend it to. So let's zoom back out here and resume. Now with this bone still highlighted, and you'll know it's highlighted when it looks red, when the color is red, come over here to your body portion and click and drag upward to about before the neck and release. Now we'll do the same with the neck. So just click and drag, but again, create a small bone that goes from fat to skinny. And finally, we'll do one for the head. So we'll just click and drag upward, again, fat to skinny. 
So now we have those bones in place. And again, it's important to note that you go in order, that this is highlighted when you make this one, that the body one's highlighted when you make the neck, and so on. If at any time you screw up this order, you can click on the link icon in your bone area, and you can see how each bone is linked. For instance, this bone is linked to this one, this one, this one, and so on. That's how we want it. But if for, ever, for whatever reason you need to link a bone to somewhere else, you can highlight a bone, and then using this tool, you can click on the bone you want to link it to. That will allow you to relink your bones if necessary. Anyway, let's resume boning our character. So let's grab the Select Bone tool, and let's click on the body bone. We'll know it's selected when it's red. Click the Add Bone tool. And now, starting at the top for our front arm, we're going to click and drag down so it goes from fat to skinny, down to close to where the elbow would be or where your first layer ends for your arm. Then we'll do the same here. And finally for the hand. Now we're gonna to have to do the same for the arm we can not see currently. So what we'll do here is we will hide the body layer so we can get access to this. So if you come on here to your layers window, you can find your body layer and just click the hide. And now we can see that second arm. So again, selecting our body bone, we're gonna take the add bone tool and we're gonna drag down drag down, and we might need to hide the butt part as well. And as you can see, when I did this, I made the bone too big. So I can reposition this by selecting the translate bone tool and just clicking the bottom and bringing it up a bit to shrink it. Once I've done that, I'll just go back here to the add bone. And with this still highlighted, just click and drag to add a bone there. And now we can reapply the layers so that they're visible. So we can go forward like that. Now, the reason why I'm selecting the body bone while applying these arms is if we go and look at our links, you'll see now that these arms are now connected to the body. And that's how we want it to go. That's how the skeleton is going to work. If we had them connected to the head, it just would not work. And you can try that on your own if you wish to see what kind of results you'll get. Maybe it's something desirable. Maybe you want to make something kind of weird. But for the purpose of this tutorial, we want to link the arms to the body and the head to the neck and so on. Okay, so let's take the select bone tool and select the bottom bone right here. Now, Taking the add bone tool, we will draw out the legs. So starting here, we'll just go right about here, here, and we'll draw a horizontal one for the foot. Select the lower bone again, click the add bone tool, and we'll go like this, and then like this, and like that. So now if we look out here, we can see that all of the bones are now in place, but we still have some work to do. Now by default, Anime Studio will expand the regions of the influence that each bone has. So we want to minimize this for this type of example. There are times where you'll want to use this type of bone animating, but for right now we want to eliminate that. So come over here to your bone window and choose the bone strength icon. When you choose this, you'll see now that you have all these transparent looking clouds that go over each bone. And this shows the influence of the bone for that area. So we want to minimize this. And to do that, 
you click on a bone and you drag to the left. And now we're gonna do that for all the bones. Just click and drag. Okay, so now we should be good to go on that end. You can test your bone animation at any time when you are in frame zero. Whatever you do in frame zero will not affect your overall animation. If you want to test the bones, you can choose the manipulate bones button. Come over here and move your bones around. But you'll see as we're doing this that it's not working properly. We just have some really weird stuff going on here and it's not right. Well, that's because we haven't bound the layers to their particular bones yet. And that is the final step that we must take. So I'm just gonna page forward one frame and then back to reset my um, manipulation I just did here. And now I'm gonna come over here to my layers window and choose the first layer on the list which is my eyebrow layer. Now with that selected and with being on frame zero, we're gonna choose the bind layer button. And now, as you can see, this eyebrow is bound to the body bone because it's highlighted in red. We want it to be bound to the face. So when the face moves, the eyebrow moves with it. So we'll just simply click on that bone to bind it to that bone. And you'll know this once it's highlighted in red. So now we just go down the line. To my chin line, I want that on the face. The nose, I want to the face. Mustache, mouth, and so on. Okay, now that I have all the layers on the face assigned, we're gonna connect the neck now to the neck bone. So with the neck highlighted, we'll just click that little bone right there and you can see that it is now highlighted. Moving on to the first hand, we want the hand to connect to the hand bone. So we'll just click that. Scroll down a bit here. For the lower arm, you want that bone to connect. Upper arm, right there. For the body itself, we want the body bone. For the butt or the lower part of the body, we want this little bone right here. And then for the top leg, we'll just click that. Bottom leg there. Top leg right here. Bottom leg right here. Foot number one. Foot number two. And then we have our hand in the background. So we'll just hide the body. And we'll also hide this lower part right here. And so for the hand, we will connect right there, right here, and right there. And then we will bring back our two layers and come up here now to our bone layer. Okay, now let's test this out. With the bone layer now highlighted, come over here to your manipulate bones icon, and let's start moving some bones around. So we move the arm around, we can see that it moves pretty fluidly. If we move the body, it tilts. The head, all of the layers on the head go with the head. We have the arms and the legs all working. There's only one problem we have, and that is when I move, for instance, this leg with this foot, you'll see that the foot does some pretty weird stuff. It's just going all over the place. Well, this is where constraining the bones comes in. So let's reset the 
pose here just by paging forward one frame and going back to frame zero. And let's take the select bone tool and select that foot so that it's highlighted in red. Now come up here to bone constraints, click angle constraints, and here you'll see now that we have some lines showing how far this bone can move. The lower the number, the less it will move. We probably don't want the feet to move all that much. So let's try putting this to negative 10 and 10, and then we'll close that. You'll see now that the angle is very constricted. But when we try moving the foot now with our manipulate bones tool, you'll see that the foot moves slightly, but it doesn't move it enough to where it breaks the animation. And that's the important step here. So you'll want to do the same probably with your other foot and your hands. So let's click the hand and we'll restrict that maybe to 20 as opposed to 10. We'll see how that works. And you might also want to constrain the elbow as well because as you can see, we can go all the way up and around like this. That might not be something you might want to do. You might want to only have it go up to this point. So again, you can mess around with those constraints and see how it works. Finally, let's do a quick test animation for this character. Let's page over to frame one with our arrow key, or you can use your mouse and click and drag to go to your desired point on the timeline. And let's click once on all of the bones using the manipulate bone button to set keyframes for this first frame. That way we have a starting point. Now, let's go all the way to frame 48, or about two seconds in. And we can just do some things here with our bones. We can manipulate like this. We can kind of move the neck and head up like that. We'll put the body like this, arm like that. You know, just kind of mess around and do some things like this. So now, you'll notice when we did all that, we now have a keyframe at 48 frames. So if we page back, you'll see that our character moves. And if we hit the play button, we can see it in motion as well. And you can always export the animation and see more. Of course, this is just a very, very simple example. I'm just showing you how you can manipulate your bones and how you can basically animate these bones on the timeline itself. There's obviously much more you can do with this, but this should give you a head start when it comes to character animation. Now, if you followed all of my steps exactly and there's still something going on, it's not animating right, or it just does not look right, please make sure, go back to frame zero here, please make sure that your links are all where they should be. Your legs should link to the bottom, your arms should link to the body, and so on. Because that right there could cause a major screw up in your animation. It can do a number of different things. And also make sure that your influence is set to zero. Because if you have this up, it could really influence how your animation looks depending on how you have set your bones. So I would advise you look at those two things if you are having difficulties. Oh, and also make sure that you have bound all of your layers to the appropriate bones. Because again, very, very important. One wrong thing could make your animation completely different. Anyway, I hope you guys found this helpful. I hope it gives you a jump start in Anime Studio, and I'll see you guys next time.